if you, Tucker Carlson, get to wave a magic wand and say, this is what I would use RFK J for, what would it be? Uh, well, I'd give him declassification power immediately. I, you know, I don't even know if that's legal uh, under federal law, but I would, I would <laughs> but try. But you got to your magic wand. Oh, I, I would I, look. I, I think one of the biggest. I mean, I think one of the reasons we have such a corrupt society at this point is because secrecy makes it possible. You know, secrecy. We you know we have no privacy. It's so interesting. We have no privacy. You keep your iPhone in your bedroom, and someone can listen to you. You know, talking to your spouse. Okay, no privacy at all. But we have more secrecy than ever. The people in charge have created a system where nothing they do can ever be evaluated because you're not allowed to know what they're doing in your name with your money. Over a billion classified federal documents, that means by definition, it's a corrupt system. So I do think going forward, if we're going to save the country, fix the system, have a government that we can believe in, be proud of, sort of, anyway, you need to declassify a lot beginning with 9-11, like, I'm sorry, everyone attacks the 9-11 conspiracy theories. I have no idea the truth, by the way. I'm not suggesting I do. But I do know that 23 years later, if we have, you know, the bulk of the documents still classified, the question is why? It's not to preserve sources and methods. That's not relevant. It's to protect mm -hmm. the guilty. Same with the JFK files. Same with I was going to say, UAP let's go stuff. back further than 9-11. Let's start well, with exactly JFK. That's exactly right. So, like, there's no justification. And people like Pompeo who in my opinion is evil, but you know we can disagree on that. But Pompeo, it was absolutely part of that. I mean, Pompeo is the reason the JFK files weren't declassified. The reason we still don't really understand a lot about 9-11. That happened in my lifetime. I had three kids on 9-11. This just happened. Like I have a right to know. This changed our country. How do I not have a right to know what the truth is? And so if you got someone like Bobby Kennedy in there, who, you know, his uncle was definitely murdered with the knowledge of CAA, I, I can say that conclusively. There are questions about how his father was murdered and by whom. Uh, you know, he has a personal sort of mission to declassify this stuff. And I would love to see that. I think his life would be in peril if he tried that. I think he'd do it anyway, um, which speaks to his courage. So yeah, I love the idea and of him running CIA or at least having the power to declassify. And last thing I'll say, if Trump gets elected, it's absolutely essential that a tool of permanent Washington doesn't take a job like CIA director. Like you need to have someone yeah. who cares okay. about the country more than the federal agency. That's absolutely essential. And the people I see in the running for CIA director, you know, some of whom I like and I know them all, but you know, they're people who absolutely don't think you have a right to know what your government is doing, who would continue to hide basic facts. Mike Pompeo, when he was CIA director, plotted an assassination of Julian Assange. That's a fact. He plotted the assassination. Now, he's a federal appointee. Julian Assange hadn't even been charged with a crime in the United States. You are not allowed to murder people in my name with my money. That's a crime. Of course, he's never going to be indicted for it. He should be today. He never will be. But we didn't even know that. There's so much stuff that we don't know. We have a right to know. This is our government. It does not belong to Mike Pompeo or to Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or anybody. It belongs to all of us. That's what democracy is. And if we allow this to continue, then let's just stop calling it democracy. Let's just call it the autocracy that it demonstrably is. That's, I mean, that's my view. All right. Now, speaking of Trump, I got to ask you about him. They almost killed him since the last time you and I spoke yep. on the air. And um, you did a wonderful job at the Republican National Convention. I said, I said, even before you came on, that you were the best one. I love that you spoke extemporaneously without notes from the heart. It's so much better than these scripted speeches, which are just so painful to listen to. No matter how compelling the figure is, it's like, okay, just talk to me. Talk to me like a human. But the, most people are incapable of yes. doing it, so hats off. But one of the things you said was that you believe Trump had changed in the wake of that horrible event. And then Trump got out there himself and said, well, here's Trump uh, shortly thereafter in SOT 17. It'd be nice. They all say, I think he's changed. I think he's changed since two weeks ago. Something affected him. No, I haven't changed. Maybe I've gotten worse, actually, because I get angry <laughs> at the incompetence that I witness every single day, the way millions of people are pouring into our country. <laughs> what do you make of that? He, he just cracks me up. I mean, I just <laughs> should say with the caveat that I, I'm charmed by Trump. Personally, I like Trump. I can't help myself. Um, he just makes me laugh. You know, 
I, I would just, I was just noting the obvious, um, which is you, you can't go through something like that without being changed. I've never been shot, but you know, like every person I've been through every person who makes it to his or her fifties goes through like unexpected events. Well, that was kind of shocking. And at first, you know, you think, well, I'm fine. I'm totally the same person. And then over time you realize, no, that, that really, that changed me. That changed my perceptions of things, my assumptions about things, my reaction to things. I'm thinking thoughts I had never thought before. I mean, it's just, it just kind of inevitable. And, you know, nobody could go through that without being changed. How will he be changed? Um, you know, my sense at the convention is because I talked to him uh, every day when I was there was that he was thinking a lot more about eternal questions, which I think is really important for all of us to be brooding on every day personally. But I think he was thinking about that more. How will it change him long term? I don't know. But I can just say, again, I've never been shot or anything like that. But every traumatic, unexpected thing that's ever happened to me, things I didn't want to happen, um, including getting fired a bunch, they've all been great. Like, they, it, it's good for you. It's mm -hmm. good for you to have your cage rattled. I think it's, it's been great for me. I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean, I think he's right when it comes to the political fight, right? It's like, how can he be super sweet and nice when they're calling him Hitler, they're calling him a racist every day, a misogynist every day. This is this from the Democratic National Convention. This is from the nice people, the Michelle Obama. Yeah. He's a racist, he's a misogynist, but it's really important to be respectful. Same person, same <laughs> speech, right? So I personally don't see how Trump is nice in trying to win the presidency. No one is. This is not a situation where niceness wins. And that leads me to my mm -hmm. last question, which is a lot of Republicans are starting to feel a little blue, maybe less blue today than they were a week ago, because I think you can feel the bloom coming off the Kamala Rose, you know, like she was anointed and she was the second coming. And now it's kind of like, well, it's not just the betting odds, but the polls are starting to correct too. And it's a very, very tight race. And you heard Michelle, Barack, everybody's starting to say that now, encouraging their base to get out. But for Republicans who are feeling down because they were soaring when he was against the declared Democratic nominee, the one who was actually voted on, and now things have shifted, what say you? How do you how do you see this thing going from over the next seventy days? Well, I I think the the outcome is unknown. I mean, I think you summed it up really well. I, you know, you can't know it is really close. There are all kinds of other factors that, you know, no one wants to talk about, including me. But you know, you've got a totally different population by over ten million people from the one you had in twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of hanging in the air. Will these non citizens here legally breaking our laws yet fully federally subsidized? Will they be able to vote? You know, I don't know the answer. I certainly hope not. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm praying for a return uh, to a country that's defined by justice, fairness, and civil liberties. I definitely am praying for that every day. But I, so I don't want to pass the question. I just don't know the answer. But I would say it's really important to remember as you're outwardly focused that what matters first and foremost is how the people around you are doing. You know, the people you, you love, that you come into contact with every day. If you're blessed enough to have children and a spouse, them. But everyone has relatives, everyone has coworkers, everyone has friends or people they care about. How are they doing? You know how much my family and I love our dogs. Yes, even my little Strudwick. Not so little. Quite a presence, actually. I can't imagine life without them, nor do I want to. They've had a great life and have one now. They're lucky. But some dogs are not so lucky. And that's why I'm so happy to tell you about Delta Rescue the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, plus cats and horses, too. They provide all the animals with shelter and safety, and most of all, with love. And they have been doing it for more than 45 years now. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions, and giving can bring tax benefits, too. Talk to your estate planner about how you can grow your estate while helping animals in need. And check out the estate planning tab on their website if you'd like to learn more. We love our Thunder and our Strudwick, and we would love to find dogs who don't have homes like they do, a loving, caring place to live. Delta Rescue helps the pups and cats and horses who need it most. DeltaRescue.org today if you'd like to help. DeltaRescue.org. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.